Okay, we're back with game two. Let me put on some music real quick. So they decided to play Auras. Uh, Kick S I decided to play Auras. Yeah, I don't know if I want to say the score, but you probably know it anyway. Because if you haven't seen game one, go watch game one first. Then the ending at game one. Um, actually, I will say it eventually at the ending of this game, but yeah, I will tell you if you haven't seen game one yet, go watch it now. But yeah, we see the Hepano get poisoned as Kick-Ass has sort of the toxic. So Kick-Ass has decided to bring some like semi-stall type of stuff with a Mega Latias and a Duggy. So Duggy is to trap Tita, so Ladi can win with, I think it's Command Stored Power. I've seen his team in like Smog I think. So what is going on here? So he went for counter, which was odd because the bishop could have gone for SD. But he, I can get kick at his play because his Skarmory probably only has like, maybe it's a double defog team, and his Skarmory only has Skarmory only has counter. It doesn't have any other attacking moves. It doesn't have toxic. So he was, he kind of had to rely on counter to hit the bishop. So like, even if the bishop SDs up, so I can understand his play. It's a lot of easy switch in. Into the Charizard, Ladi also can eat hits from the Bishop if it's the the Calm Mind Slot Power Ruth set with uh, Reflect type. But the only problem is it can't touch the Bishop. It can <laughs> change its typing, but it can't touch the Bishop, so it doesn't help the Ladi. And yet, the the as long as the Dougie has the Sash intact, he can also always revenge the Bishop if it gets out of hand. As he tries to predict the double switch, there goes for Flamethrower again. Maybe predicting a double into Dougie and gets a burn, which is really annoying for Kick Assa. Good lord. He just keeps clicking Flamethrower because he knows that he's kind of forced to roost spam here. And now he goes Bishop predicting something. Yeah, he just predicting the roost again. So let me look at the else team. I haven't really gotten a chance. So they both have Mega. L no, 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 never mind. He has a regular Latios. Ladias, that's a healing wish, because that's like the main reason that you run it. He gets the pursuit off, and the Ladi is almost dead now. So that burn definitely sucked a bit. Otherwise, the Ladi would have been a bit healthy and could still easily heal up on stuff like Suicune. Can also heal up on a Powdown. If it's max speed, max HP, can also heal up on Zard. But yeah, just predicts another Toxic goes to Hippo. You can either. Yeah, I can switch into like Suicune here with. I don't know why he went Hippo to get up the sand, because the sand hurts the Suicune too. So Seattle's team is like... bulky offense. Like I was about to say it was like almost full offense, but then I see the Suicune and like there's also a Hippo. And Larius over Larius is a bit more bulk in that sense. Obviously with that healing wish utility like I said earlier. On these builds sometimes you see um... ST3 attacks drill without rapid spin and then just defog on Ladi, but I think it's uh, spin on drill. But damn, this game is weird. I don't really know what to tell you. Um, Sun and Moon is like the game that I can narrow definitely a bit better. Like, I haven't played Auras in a long time, I never play um, Black and White. I mean, Kick-Ass has Heal Bell on his Clefable and he has Wish, but like he doesn't have anything with Healing Wish to bring his Ladi back, like... He goes to Zapdos, which is understandable in the sense... And in the sense that he has pressure, so CL doesn't get up rocks, but I was about to say before he clicked the Toxic, like this Hippo might have Toxic, so I don't know if I would have made that play. But and uh, it's fine. It's fine for Kick Asa in the sense that he has heal well on Fable, Yeah, it's it's not the end of the world for him. So he goes Dougie this time. I think he breaked the Star Frogs, and the poison would have wrecked up on the hippo. And he went hard Dougie breaking rocks, so he still would have had a session tagged. I mean, also. I don't know, I don't think he bricked the drill, but it's obviously worked out great for Kick Asa. Because the turn just ended on this. The sand just ended on this turn. And I don't think Sash Drill is a thing. Scarf Drill also isn't a thing on sand. 
we do see that we that he doesn't have mold breaker, so he's obviously sand rush. And yet his earthquake from the doggy will just pick up the kill here, unless it's some random super bulky drill or has like a sugar berry or whatever that berry is called. Oh, we hope Excalibur goes down. I don't think that crit matters, even though Dougie only has A attack, I think, and... I don't think that crit matters. Why did I say justice? I don't think that mattered. What? I mean, I can calc it for you guys, but I'm pretty sure it didn't matter. Oh, you sand rush versus Dougie. It's just going off that the Excalibur doesn't have any LHP investment and it does 114 minimum, so yeah. I, like, I don't not really know what I said justice. Maybe they're just trolling because it's the smoke to chat. So I assume we're gonna see the Clefable here, because that way kick as I can go for... Go for heal ball. But okay, he decides to go on his own Suicune. I see how he just let's go for a game. We're clicking that command button. We don't care about the underwear Clef on the opposing side. He's trying to get a burn here. As kick as I misses a Toxic. I mean, I assume the Suicune has rest anyway. Oh, I subs Oh my god! God, that toxic miss sucks so much because he's he's Wincoon. He's Wincoon is a comment, scalds up and protect. He's not rest. That sucks so much that the toxic miss then. My God, that sucks. Why didn't he go for substitute hard? I guess he didn't want to get stalled out of PP and he wanted to like predict the clef and try to burn or something. I'm not really sure. But I didn't go hard for sub, but the toxic miss sucks because he didn't have heal bell. Like, his coon would have been like. His coon would have been done. Like, his only way to bring the coon back without a toxic is like healing wish from Ladi. Yeah, okay. So he could have still brought it back, but it's not like. That the toxic miss still had an impact somewhat. So now it's just CM Wars and like Kick Ass is like trying to PP stall this coon. Like, that burn doesn't do that much for CL. I think he can just. Either comment once more here, kick ass, or he can just rest. Okay, comments more. Dude, I didn't want to see comment wars after that game one, where like it ended off with like a really close. I didn't want to spoil it in case you didn't see it. Really close game one, good lord. But this is just gonna be, I don't know how to narrate this, because it's like th two three cones looking at each other, but they can't really touch each other. <laughs> it's just gonna come down to some PP wars and whoever crits and stuff, and CL has a substitute up. So like, no, no, kick has the upper hand, to be honest, in this, because when he's asleep, he can just, he doesn't have to waste PP when he's asleep. So CL's, CL has the upper hand if you're, in the sense that he can try to get a scald crit because he's on the offensive. Kegaza is basically at the defensive. He can. Like, if it comes down to PP stall, Kegaza wins this 1v1 because when he's asleep, the opposing Suicone has to waste PP. And he can just not click anything. Like, he doesn't even have to click Sleep Talk. As he doesn't even have Sleep Go, if you see, he's toxic. Yeah, we saw that earlier. So his last move is Scald, obviously, then. It's an interesting set. I, th I think I've seen this team used in smoke tours for, by value, if I remember correctly. But yeah, um, I don't know why Seal is going for Calm Mind because that way he's not gonna accomplish anything. I don't think because he has less PP. His only is I think the only way he can accomplish something is by attacking uh, at least. Like, attacking is bad for CL because he's losing PP. But if he attacks and gets the crit, that's a, that, that is what makes CL have a chance here to win the Suicune War. But if CL crits here, I'm actually out of here. I don't want to record anymore. I don't want more hacks. <laughs> we saw game one, you know what I'm speaking about. Um, Yeah. Wait, why did he say that? Why is CL's pressure not working? What? Like, pressure only works if you use moves that hit on the opposing side. Like, substitute, command, and roost is a move that you. Yeah, exactly. Pressure only works on moves that tugging them on. Yeah, exactly. Like, defog gets. and stealth rocks that goes on the opposing side. 
You lose 2 PP for, from that or by that for using that move. But moves that are on your side like Call Mine, Substitute, Protect, you still have all EPP, you don't lose any PP by pressure. Okay, Avia says, I think Kill Kessa still wins. I mean, yeah, that's, that's what I was talking about. The, the PP war he wins when we won, but like. What CL has going for him is that he has a substitute up and then he has the chance to crit. Which is what eventually he's gonna fish for a crit, I think. He's gonna have to eventually. Yeah, game one was Sun and Moon and. Kinda cool for me to see Sun and Moon first because I don't have the black and white knowledge. I'm trying to bring you all this smog to this content. We have like a lot of more games coming up this weekend, oh, um, which should be Blunder vs. Alexander. I think PDC plays, I forgot his opponent. You can just go through the list while they're clicking Call Mind. Flame Victini vs. Empo. Kring vs. Elkans, also Ben Gaze into. Oh yeah, Poik already played. PDC was partial, Blunder was Alexander, Solon was Martial Law, and ABR was Nintendo. So some hype matchups and the deadline is on Sunday, and today is Friday. I hope I'm gonna be able to catch most. I'll probably miss one or two, maybe, because you know I'm in a different time zone and like if some game is like 6 a.m. my time or 4 a.m. my time I might miss it. Which is possible for sure, because like 4 a.m. my time, they he really decides to play this the PP stall game now. Okay, guess I said I've had enough. He goes Dougie here. And then he goes into Clef. Because that way, yeah, that was the correct play. Like, he had to go cl Clef. Because even his Kuhn would have taken a lot from the Scald. Wait, sorry, he said this game is over. What? Can't he technically still PP stall the skulls? Like he only has 16 skulls. Like this has protects, wishes, heal bell. Oh, he really decided to go into Kuhn to like this waste two skulls, but this is gonna do like 60%. Oh, never mind, that did nothing. That did nothing. What the fuck? I thought that would do like 60 or 50. That bounced off. Okay, never mind. So he PP stalls this easily. I have to take that back. He PP stalls this so easy, it's not even funny. I thought it would at least do more than the crew. I'm like, what? Like, you had plus six, dude. Like, I understand it's only a skull. But, like, still. I mean, that why it's kind of threatening to kick ass her, because his Lottie got burned the soup is at 5% because of the. Like, the pursuit from Bishop and the burn damage and everything. He does wish pass into Kuhn. He can either start Calm Mining up again. Which might be the play, because if he has Calm Mines... Because this has only 9 skulls left. Oh, there only has 7 skulls left, so if he comments here, yeah, I think kick Ether wins now. Because if he has enough comments up this uh, Suicune Walls, the Cherry is out, which otherwise the Cherry is a bit threatening. And this just puts him in a really good position. The way CL has to kill this um, is either a potential trick on a Scarf Lottie, which I could see Scarf Lottie on this team. Like Scarf Healing Wish, like so, to ensure to get it off, Scarf Trick to like cripple a Fathomon makes some sense to me. He goes hard into Zard because he knows the Kuhn is still asleep for another turn and the Solar Beam is gonna do a lot even though this has his defense boost. As uh, the death boost, I think it's gonna do like 45. But we're gonna see. Yeah, 48, okay. My calc wasn't that wrong. But yeah, kick as I can go for rest again and basically stall this Zard out of Solar Beams. Um, I think he's gonna rest here and he might have to switch the turn after. He might have to switch. If he gets crit here, I'm gonna get mad. <laughs> like, I don't have anything against Seal, but... He already hacks the bit in game 1, and... It would be cool to see a game 3, even though I have no idea about black and white. <laughs> he does go zap to sprinting a solar beam, which is a really cool play, so that way he wastes, um... 2 PP of solar beam. 
But now what's the fire blast switch in? Sacking a lot probably, right? A sealed... Maybe he has only flamethrower and that wouldn't kill the Zapdos? Okay, he does go so good. Yeah, I can understand how Kick-Ass played this, never meant to take that back. Um, he didn't have... like, he wasn't that pressured by Zart, because... The sun was about to run out, I think, yeah. The sun was about to run out. But yeah, he does Devog and the bishop gets a plus two. And the knockoff... I think he has the knockoff here. So Skarmory is gonna kill a counter here. Like, even if he has Deeds, it doesn't do anything, because Skarmory has a sturdy attack. The only way he can outplay that, if he, like, keeps SDing on every counter... Oh, he showed Pursuit, so I don't think he has SD. I think this is a 4 attacks Bishop, which is either AV... Either AV or Dreadblade 4 attacks. I mean, it could also be Lifo, but I think it's uh, more than likely Dreadblade or AV. It makes a bit more sense. As he tries to flinch and... Oh, why did he go for Toxic? No! He can potentially still live his um, plus two knockoff, but it's gonna do a lot, dude. It's gonna do a lot. He just tries to flinch again because he knows that he can live and he doesn't get it. Okay, so Kikaza is back in this view. If he flinched, that would have been over. He's just going for the flinches. And he gets it. But yeah, he should still be out of range. But I can see what Ciel is doing. Like, it makes a lot of sense now to me. Because if he gets countered here, if he, get, if he clicks counter here, the bishop doesn't die because the iron head doesn't do that much. Yeah, so that's actually kind of cool how Ciel is playing this. I mean, he can also sack his Ladi here. He can sack his Ladi here and then trap this bishop with the doggy. But it's so hard to handle Zard Y for him, like, with the sun up. He was able to stall it out earlier when he had a common up with Suigun, but without that common up, it would have been super hard to. So I hope he can pull through so we can see game 3, but it's gonna be a bit rough for Kick Ass. Uh. It's another flinch. <laughs> How many BP does it have? 18 left. Yeah, it still has more Iron Heads than Ruse, so yeah. And he's eventually gonna SD. Like, Ciel is eventually gonna SD up, I think. Oh, he doesn't have SD, we already talked about this, what am I saying? He only got his boost because of the Defiant. My bad, guys. He only got his boost because of the Defiant from the Defog. Like, if he had SD, I think he would have shown it by now. I just talked about this, that he probably has four attacks, Bishop, and there we see the counter. This time he doesn't get flinch and does really good damage on the Bishop. And you can click Roost or Counter here, because I could see CL going for knockoff here, predicting the Roost. But he doesn't do it, okay. It's just gonna Roost again, yeah. Back to Sturdy, that way you can always live any hit. And yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, never mind. Yeah, Kick-Ass, I played this well. I played this correct. So yeah, I was about to say, I could see... <laughs> Man, stop making the play before I can say it. I could see CL switching, because... Wait, why did he Toxic there? He broke the Desert that... I can get behind this play, but like... Yeah, yeah, if he just spams Toxic... In case the Zard comes hard in... It's gonna be bad for kick ass if the Zard ever gets a free switch. But yeah, this way the Bishop gets another plus two. And he did waste some BP on the Skarmory, so I can see what CL is doing here. Yeah, he's just switching back and forth now. He said, I've had enough. I'm stalling you out of counters and I'm trying to win with my bishop. He's, I'm, he's probably setting up his rocks again here. I can see uh, kick as I going to Zapdos, maybe. As he does just go Zapdos, yup. On the rocks and... The Paladin can go for Toxic, but it's gonna get Willed and Skarmory can... Uh, Zapdos can go for Defog, exactly. But yeah, he does hit. So I assume we're gonna see the Skarmory switch slash Clefable. Yep, 
Michael Faber comes out. Gets it in on the Lottie. And Kikes, I can go for a wish here. Or a heal ball if his Suicune is asleep. I think a wish is cooler though. He goes for a protect, which um scouting for scouting for a potential trick there, which I can understand. But yeah, the Zard is gonna go in now. I think he has to Pretty sure you have to thank his Lottie here. Unless he's like super spadev on the clef. But he decides to play it risky and go to Kuhn first. Um, oh, I was about to say, is he gonna predict him to predict the Zapdos? Because the solo beam was like kinda obvious. I like the scum slash Zapdos. Oh my god, CL keeps over predicting. Dude, now he's gonna switch. No, the sun is over. The sun is over. Now he walls. Oh my god, I don't know if I should say kick as a god or... Like CL kept predicting him to pivot out on the solar beam and like he just stayed in, he didn't care. Like he, he either just predicted or he didn't care. I think he tried to predict it and he got it correct. So if I'm kick as a here I might go into something to scout for the trick. But that CL switch was just... Okay, okay, maybe he doesn't have trick. CL switch was just to get the sun back and now he's just... I don't care. You are staying in with your Suicune the entire time. Now I'm just clicking Solar Beam and uh, Flamethrower should be a roll from this range. As he, yeah, he, does, he gets the potential roll. I did 30, 30 earlier. Even though the Kuhn could have been at 30 because Shodan likes to round down. But he did heal by the Ladi and the way that this way that he sacked off the Kuhn confirms that he's max speed Ladi because he can come in on the, the Zard and Roost. But as long as the Bishop is alive, I don't... I don't think this does do too much for kick Asa if he really is that set that I'm assuming he is with Stored Power Roost. Uh, Calm Mind. And Reflect Type. Like he cannot touch Bishop if he has that move. So even if he Roosts here, this is. Oh, this is kind of 50 50 because he can go Bishop. Uh, not Bishop. He can go Duck Tree if he predicts the Bishop here. Which is a risky. It's a really risky play for kick Asa. Did he go Duggy? Oh no, man, he just went Hippo. So Ruth is the right play for kick then and worked out. Like if... I can understand CL's play, like... If he sacks the Hippo to the Lari, he gets his Bishop and then he can just spam Pursuit. And he's like f completely free to click Pursuit. So like I said, I don't think this Lari can touch the Bishop. Yeah, so that wasn't a 50-50. Like just... In case they Like if CL would have been bad, he would have gone hard Bishop and... Potentially gotten bopped by a hard Duggy there, but... He made a correct play there. Yeah, the thing is to win 50-50 with Bishop was Lari, but uh, he can just sack something to Lari. I mean, kick it. Um, if he sacks something to Lari, Bishop can then come in and pursue it, like I said earlier. I assume we're gonna just see a psychic move come out from the Lari here, like a side shock or something. Like, if he has trick, he just hasn't shown it yet, he can go for that and break the clef. But he breaks the clef and goes into Zard. Kinda makes me think that he's... Maybe not healing wish Lottie, maybe he's roost... Lottie instead of healing wish and he doesn't have trick. But that means that would mean, would mean he's not Scarf Lottie, so he's kind of slow. So his speed control... Now never mind, his speed control is like Sucker Punch on Bisharp. And he also has a Sandwich Drill. And he predicts the... Lighting doubles into Bishop, which is a gold play. But yeah, kick as a goes for a reflect dive there. Getting ready for the 50-50s. Um, I'm not sure why he went for Sucker Punch. He's obviously predicting this Ladi. He scouted basically for this Ladi having a move to hit the Bishop. But it's pretty obvious that the Ladi doesn't have a move to touch the Bish. So I guess... Since the bishop doesn't have SD, this works out for kick Asa, so never mind, yeah. I thought this bishop always beats this. Like, I know, I knew that kick Asa make, keeps making the... CL keeps making the nice double into Zard on the clef. Might go for protect to waste the sun turn. Like, I knew that the... That the Lari can't touch the bishop. And I thought the bishop beats the Lari one on one, but it seems that... Since this bishop doesn't have SD and it can't boost its power... I don't know why he keeps wasting his sucker punch though. Like, he, I can get it because he's like still scouting for an attacking move, but it's like so obvious. Like, I don't know how I have to say this. But it's a reflect type. 
I mean, also I've seen this team in a tour, but also the way it is played and the way this team, this team has a doggy. It clearly has a doggy to get rid of Tita, so this is stored powder because it's walled by stuff like Tita and Bishop. Like, it just makes a lot of sense when you look at the team. But yeah, I didn't really finish my thought process there. What, what was I saying? He's just gonna go back into Zardi break in the clef, I think. Like, I knew that the Lari could with Reflect Deck take Bishop's typing. But the thing is... I for, like I, I think at the point that I mentioned that, I didn't know that the Bishop doesn't have SD. Because the Bishop kinda gets... Yeah, the Bishop kinda gets PP stalled by the Lari. Um... He hasn't shown knockoff yet. Knockoff has 30 PPP. Yeah, all those moves bounce off of Ladi because it's mega, so knockoff doesn't do anything, especially resisted when it's reflect type. Um, but the thing that CL has going for him here is reflect type only has 24 PP, so it might come down to that. That he might like he might try to stall kick ass. Uh, might try to stall kick ass out of reflect types. He just goes for defog even though he's faster, that was weird. I mean he didn't want to go Zapdos because he's poisoned, but like... Yeah, this works out for kick as a kind of. And see how it's like going to so you can need to waste 2 defog PP. I'm not really sure, I think if CL plays it perfectly... Dude, if, if kick as a... yeah yeah, kick as a way of winning is like... Catching the bishop with a doggy on a double. Because I don't think he wants to sack anything. Like, I think he kind of wants every team member alive. So it's not like he's just is ever going to sack anything and then go with Dagi to revenge the bishop. I think he's going to try to catch it on a double eventually. So we might sit here for a while. <laughs> it's not the most exciting game, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you wanted to see something a bit faster. And he does catch the Zar with a Toxic there, which is clutch for him, but... No, 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 but this is clutch. He just goes Ladi here. He doesn't care if the Bishop comes out. And this time CL doesn't get a burn like earlier. He got a burn. It was annoying for Kigatha. Yeah, if like the Zard is also eventually gonna run off Flamethrower because it wasted quite a few of those. Whereas the Suicune, the pressure ability, I think it wastes like se 6 or 8 PP. Where's the Kuhn? The Light is gonna go for a Reflect Type here, I think. And yeah, exactly. This is what I'm talking about. CL is trying to stall out the Reflect Types. He has 20 left. And with Rocks up, the Sucker Punch should kill the Doggy. So in that sense, CL is not in a bad position at the moment. If we can keep rocks up. Do we see a double into Zard? Can we see switching to Bishop? I don't think Bishop can kill Clefable from 94. I could also see CL just going back into Zard here because the Skarm is kind of obvious. The Skarmory slash Protect slash Moonblast. Oh, it's already 1 out 20 turns. I didn't even realize. Someone said it in the chat. No, nah, no, nah, ABR versus Telly was way longer. Someone said ABR versus Telly and like put it like this. But like ABR versus Telly was still 6 versus 6 after 120 turns for sure. I think. Unless I'm like super wrong. I think it was still 6 versus 6. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The scam was like obvious there. But he keeps pretty he keeps doubling around here. Doesn't want to waste another flames for PP. I mean, CL has rocks on the opposing side, so this is working out for him, kinda. Yeah, like ABI was just telly that was switching around, but it didn't have hazards up. But okay, CL finally stops doubling. Like, I thought he had would have doubled into Zard again, but I can understand why he did stop doubling, because it wouldn't have done much for him in the sense that the sun was about to run out one, and two. Like, his Zard also kinda runs out of flamethrowers, like I said earlier. Okay, he has 10 left. No oh, mind, I thought Flamethrower has 16 PP, it has 24. Um, I think it's gonna go for Roost here, oh my lord, please. You know it would be hype if... Um, 
freaking thing. A freaking blonde I will play with Alexander right after this. That would be cool. But yeah, it's gonna <laughs> take forever to upload, good lord. She's gonna fish for burn. And Kikaisa is gonna pass this to Zapdos or, or um, Skamri. Um, a high roll might kill this, but okay, okay. I don't think it was a roll then, because he still had 8% left. No, no, he didn't record the whole game. He recorded like. They were talking about NGMP recording ABR. It was Telly. They recorded like a few turns. I also recorded a few turns. I recorded like the ending. I recorded like the ending. I recorded game one like. For ABR was Telly. And like game two, I recorded like. Every few minutes. Like I paused it like. For a few hundred turns in between, and then I started recording again at the ending when ABR went in with his FD Skarmory. I don't remember the game that well, honestly. But I remember staying up for like. and like completely ruined my sleep schedule. <laughs> like, it, the game was like over at like 6 a.m. my time. But I assume it's just gonna exactly. CL just keeps making this play where he, um. Brings in the bishop, scares the laddie, because if the laddie doesn't go for the flag type, the bishop would do a lot of damage with knockoff or pursuit. And if the laddie goes for the flag type, and CL switches out, the laddie loses a PP, and CL keeps getting his play correct. And if he does this play correct 19 more times, Kikesa is in trouble. And like I mentioned earlier, if Kikesa. Doubles into Dougie on the correct turn. Uh, CL is in trouble because the rocks are not on the field at the moment. CL needs to get the rocks back up to put some pressure. Like if CL doesn't get the rocks up, Kikesa has a decent chance to win as I feel. Also his Zard is poisoned which is huge. Because it's just forced to roost eventually, like now he's gonna roost again I think. Oh, he might also break kick effort to go for protecty and just go for flamethrower. I could see that, but he just goes for roost, plays it safe. And eventually I can see kick effort doubling, predicting the bishop into into Dougie, like I said. Like, this is a specific a, a turn where he could double into Dougie. Did he do it? Dude, he won if he did it. Like, I was about to say, I don't think he's going to do it this turn. But, like, this turn is going to happen again, like... Like, this turn is gonna happen again eventually. I think CL is just gonna go Lottie here. Predicting the Reflect type again. As he does get the play correct, and now he's just gonna go back to Bishop. Watch this play, go hard into Dougie here, go hard into Dougie here. Oh my god, he stayed in, he, was, he won the speed time. Okay, so hard into Dougie was completely awful and wrong ghosting on my part there. Cause, um, <laughs> let, me, let me explain real quick. I said that, like, kinda for fun, but like... <laughs> I, like, I don't know, like, I got that wrong completely. Like, CL knows that it's probably stored power by now, right? He knows by now it's stored power Ladi, just the way it's played and everything. So, the opposing Ladi can't touch his Ladi until he gets more CM boosts. So he didn't have to make go back into Bishop there. So, oh my god, what? He sacked his Bishop, this game's over. I think kick wins now. The Ladi just sweeps now. Yeah, like he can go for protective, throw out some sun turns. He can also go hard into Ladi. I don't know if he wants to go hard into Ladi because he can eventually get burned. Oh, uh, he can get burned. Kinda. Wait, I'm, I'm not really sure why he went. Why did he go bishop that turn? Oh, the, the Ladi was pretty obvious, so he breaked the Ladi. I think that's what he predicted as it's Rocky Hammer the power, which is interesting. And now the Ladi. Um, the Ladi doesn't come in yet because this has Toxic. He goes into Zapdos and he switches. He either goes for. Um, if he do have kills or HPS, whatever he has. If that kills, he goes for that. And if not, he goes into Scum. He scout for the Toxic. Okay, he just goes for Heatwave. And he gets a burn, which doesn't matter at this point. Like. Now it's over for Seal, and we will get a game three, which is gonna be black and white. Um, where's the turn that I was talking about where he lost the bishop? I th I, I don't remember correctly, but I think it was on a turn that Seal predicted the 
the lady and went to bishop, which she didn't have to do. But I can understand that Seal is kind of like... He was kind of in a bad position. Because if he stays in with his Zard and attacks the Ladi, he's just gonna take poison damage every time, lose flamethrower PP, etc. Like he's not gonna make that much progress, like his only way was pretty much stalling out the Reflect type from the Ladi so Bishop could trap it. And there was still a potential that Kickers eventually... Oh my lord. That kills at 79. I thought that Zart might live because it has really good speed that why? And it's just that I don't think the Zapdos runs special attack investment. Like it was slightly in the favor of Kickass, but I don't. I think it would have taken like way longer. Like I do still think that without the um, without the toxic myth earlier, that he probably could have won earlier. Um, yeah, this was a really weird game. My analysis might be com kind of wrong. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna end it definitely here and I will see you with a game 3. This time we get a game 3. I'm hyped for that. And maybe I'll try to call someone because I don't know that much about black and white. Stay tuned for that. Um, black and white will decide who moves on to top 8 of Smog Tours playoffs. Smog Tours 23 and Dockwitch signing out. Peace.